Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll be doing my match reactions for the two games. So we're going to start first with the Albania and Nail Spain one. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I'll say this right now. I hardly watched much of this game. And you have to, I have to blame Vix here for this. Vix wasn't even streaming this game, and I even paid for my thing, and they weren't even streaming this game. And as well as the fact that this game, when it came down to it, there's not a whole lot to discuss. You know, Spain pretty much fielded their second string 11. And Albania put up their best 11 they possibly could. And Spain just got the job done. Ferran Torres got the goal there. Omo there with the assist. It was a great finish from Ferran Torres. And Albania, they gave it their all. They pushed at the end. But they just didn't have enough quality at the end of the day. Even against the Spain B team. Which is really disappointing for Albania. Because they could have got something from this game. They could have got something. Like Ray Manaj had a great effort in the second half. Um, you know, and everything. They had some good chances. Bora had a good save there. The 92nd minute, that would have drawn level. Uh, but yeah, Al Albania just never really looked like they were going to score in this game. 64th minute. And yeah, Albania, it's tough luck for them. They finished ball in the group with one point. But I think Albanians should be feeling proud that they made the Euros and against the odds. Because a lot of people didn't expect them to qualify from a group with Czech Republic and Poland. Right? So I think for Albania, the next step now is to try to see if they could qualify for the World Cup. Especially with the World Cup being expanded to 16 European teams. They have a good chance to qualify. And some of the European teams are kind of been a bit underwhelming. So for Albania, I think their next step should be trying to make the World Cup now with expanded format because they have never, ever made the World Cup. And for Spain, congratulations. They topped the group. Perfect record. Three out of three wins. Five goals scored. Fantastic. I mean, what is there to say with Spain? They're obviously one of the contenders to win this year's Euros. And I think Spain will really grow in the tournament, guys. Spain, look out for Spain, guys. I think they could do something. Moving on to the other game. The game that I was more focused about. Croatia won, Italy won. And for me, the first half of Croatia-Italy was a pretty good game. I thought Croatia-Italy was actually a pretty good game the first half. You know, Croatia started to get control of the game. But as the game wore on, you could tell that Croatia were really struggling in the final third to create some genuine goal scoring opportunities. Italy were managing to get the better of. And, you know, um, Livakovic had to make some big saves. Obviously, the Bastoni save was a big one. But Zagoi, uh, Rotegi, um, and in the first half, it was pretty uneventful, to be honest with you. But the second half is where things come alive because Croatia started to really take control, really started to do this. And then obviously they win a penalty there. It's a handball there from, I believe it's Fratesi. It's a ha Fratesi handball. And then obviously stop with Luka Modric. And you're thinking, okay, Luka Modric's going to score this penalty to make a 1-0. Instead, he gets saved. However, Croatia then recycled the ball and eventually it finds to Budimir. And Budimir passes it to Modric and Modric scores to make a 1-0. I think some okay, Croatia is now in the ascendancy in their control now. But it just felt like when Croatia took the lead, it felt like, you know what, we're going to go defensive. We're going to go defensive now. And Italy took full advantage by that by putting so many good opportunities. I remember those last couple of minutes, guys. Italy had a lot of opportunities to score. Like, there was this miss there, De Lorenzo. Sorry, not this one. Frates, this miss right there from Darmian. Or, sorry, Raspadori. Raspadori. This chance right there, Skamaka. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing here in the football, but there was a chance uh, Italy had right at the end, and I think they even missed the complete net. Um, De Lorenzo and the, those guys. And then Zakingi comes off the bench, scores the equalizer there to make it 1-1, one, one, and Italy are through. Italy comes second in the group now. They're in the round of 16. They'll be playing against Switzerland, and guys, that's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a tough game. And I'm looking at this Italy team, man. Raspadori, Rategi. The attack for Italy is just horrendous. Uh, it's really horrendous. Defensively, also been pretty solid. I thought I think Donnarumma was amazing on the day. He made some outstanding saves to keep Italy in the game. Uh, obviously, California will be suspended for the round of 16, which is a big blow. And yeah, I think for Italy, man, I think they, they should be happy with this. But they're going to have to improve massively. Because Switzerland, by no means, is an easy team. Like, we saw how good Switzerland were against Germany. So, I think... Italy are going to have to massively improve if they want to beat Switzerland on this one. And for Croatia, man, is it over for them, for them to get grouped? Because it's looking very, very, it's looking very likely they're going to get grouped. Because let's look at the other group standings real quick, and then I'll just, they'll wrap it up here. Because you can see right here in the table right here, guys. So Hungary have a more points of them, so they, will, they won't be able to finish above Hungary. Slovenia. Now, the thing for Slovenia, they're going to have to hope that England does a massive favor and destroy Slovenia. Because Croatia is a minus three goal difference. Then this one is pretty much over. I don't think there's any way. Yeah, there's, it's pretty much over. Group E is pretty much over. And uh, then Group F. Now, Group F, 
they got to hope that Turkey and Georgia both lose by a big margin. So it's going to be very difficult, guys, because basically Croatia's fate is not in their own hands. They're going to have to hope that either Slovenia or Czech Republic screw up. That's what it's going to come down to, because they're going to come into the they're going to be as as two points with minus three goal difference. It's going to be very very tough. Is that going to be enough? Most likely not. Most likely not. Usually you need three points or more to advance. And for Croatia, man, as I said, man, they're on thin ice, thin ice, thin ice. So I hope you guys did enjoy this little video for you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. So please run a like and subscribe. And if there's major any major talking points in the comment section below, please let me know. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.